welcome everyone to the fifth episode of Responder Chain. I have my friend Yvonne here, and uh, we're going to talk about an app that he built uh, later in this episode that uh, was built with AppKit and some fun things about the menu bar. But before we get into that, uh, let's talk about sort of how you got started in, um, let's just start with developing and Apple platforms in general. Yeah. So hi, everyone. Um, so my journey actually started quite some time ago. It was 2011, I believe. And I still remember that time when Interface Builder was like a separate app. It's not. It was not like part of Xcode. I also remember that basically back then you had to uh, deal with memory by your own, like auto release and all that stuff. So it was quite fun back then. And yeah, basically that's how my story started. And yeah, I was always um, like trying to be more um, visual thinking kind of person. And I, I believe that in Apple platform and especially on iOS, this is also kind of the, the key. So they're always trying to make the app, their apps like look perfect. And yeah, I always like that. And basically I wanted to try to build something uh, for my own. And in 2011, basically, I started uh, looking for tutorials, all that stuff. And um, back then, there was pretty small community, but still in my country, in Ukraine, I was able to find some people who basically just helped me to start with some things. And I was basically developing some really simple stuff, and they were teaching me. Uh, they, yeah, that's how it started. Then again, in 2011, I, I was able to find my first job. It was basically start, start, a starting point for my career. And yeah, since that uh, moment, I've been developing constantly Objective-C, then Swift. And yeah, that's how I uh, basically came up. Yeah. Cool. So did you start with iOS originally, or um, did you start with Mac OS as well? No, that's actually funny thing that I was able basically to implement my first macOS app only now in 2020. So basically nine years almost <laughs> I've been doing iOS only, even though it's, you know, it's in the end not so difficult to basically do a macOS application because the language is similar, the platform is similar, kind of, kind of, yeah. Also, some people are joking that basically if you want to do a macOS app, you just have to exchange UI with NS and you are done. Basically, every class like <laughs> NS view, NS image, whatever, is basically similar. It's not. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, uh, I, I get that a lot with, well, I feel like people that have built Mac apps, they, they generally say that it's similar enough. <laughs> and the it's, people that haven't are bewildered by mac os development for some reason and i've never quite understood that i mean i understand that it has its quirks here and there and i think the view uh, ns view versus ui view is definitely the the largest difference there but once you kind of get over the differences between ui view and ns view i've always kind of found that the rest of the controls are very similar i mean there's collection view stack view table view right i mean they all kind of behave in very similar ways and Maybe you have to learn slightly different things, but uh, yeah. So it, I, I'm, I'm glad at least that you found the transition not to be that bad. So. <laughs> yeah, cool. of course I had some difficulties. For instance, if we're talking about like simplest view, which is an S view, my confusion was this is flipped. Like it's basically using different um, orientation kind of, uh, or origin point or whatever. And for me, I, I came basically from iOS where everything was like pretty straightforward, but this particular thing, it was completely different. And if you mess up with it or you just forgot to to use it, then then you're screwed. Like, like your UI is completely different and it's not that obvious, at least for me, because it's my first application, not that obvious to realize what is actually wrong with my UI. And then when you like reading some um, tutorials, like reading documentation, then you see, ah, oh, there is like is flipped <laughs> thingy that you have to use. Yeah, yeah that, that that is a definitely a quirk. I mean, it has its advantages as well, being able to kind of flip the, the coordinate space, whether it's the top or bottom, but uh, um, depending on kind of what you want to implement, it's sometimes easier to def define it uh, going from top to bottom or bottom to top. And, uh, but there definitely are some some weird quirks in there as well. Uh, have you tried with uh, Swift UI at all yet, or have you kind of stayed away from that box? 
<laughs> well, um, I tried. I cannot say that um, um, I have some kind of commercial experience with that. It's basically right. playing around here and there, trying different things, following tutorials. Um, right now, the community is that so big that you basically can find anything you want on that topic, especially, you know, this uh, 100 days of Swift UI and different things 100 days. So, um, so yeah, basically I've tried, but I didn't have any commercial experience. Even when I started doing my application, um, I was thinking, okay, I basically have different options. I can make an app using Catalyst, for instance. I can make uh, something based on Swift UI. But in the end, I just decided to go with the old school way, which is AppKit. And yeah, I feel it's more comfortable for me, this, this approach. To be honest, I still not get, get not get used to this um, declarative programming. So I'm more like imperative style person. Yeah, even though actually in my application I'm using Combine, I just don't feel comfortable at this moment trying something um, like SwiftUI, for instance. Yeah. So you actually integrated Combine into your AppKit project. Sorry. So you inter integrated Combine into your AppKit project. Is what yeah. Yeah, exactly. Initially, I, I wanted to basically uh, keep supporting um, macOS 10.15 Mojave or 14 Mojave. And at the same time, I wanted to already try Combine. So I started Googling and I found that there are a couple of open source alternatives. One is Open Combine, another one is Combine X. Yeah, and I've tried first this Combine X. It's actually pretty similar. And uh, I mean, it has completely the same API as Combine. And yeah, it works pretty well. But then um, I realized that, okay, there is no actually point to support um, Mojave because I know, I think, I believe actually that majority of developers, they already switched to the latest um, OS, which is Catalina. And I just decided to drop and switch completely to um, combine the, the native one. And the funny thing that I didn't have to change anything almost in my code because as, a, as I said, it has the same API completely. Yeah. So. I mean, we haven't really talked about your app yet, but yeah, I mean, for your case with your app is based on a development tool. So for, for probably majority of developers out there, I, I kind of imagine that they're working on the latest stuff. Um, yeah. Probably weird. I mean, I know Xcode, I think still works for like one version before up to a point, um, at least on Mac OS. But um, yeah, I mean, most people would probably be on, at least developer wise would be on yeah. the latest. So it makes totally. sense. Cool. Um, maybe uh, kind of actually interested in what you um, what you utilize combined for in your app because I personally haven't really played around with too much. I mean, I kind of understand the concepts behind it, but I'm really not that familiar with it. So kind of curious if you could speak to just what you actually used it in your app and why you wanted to use combine over just some other standard approaches, I guess. Yeah. So the reason is quite simple, basically. Uh, in my company, I also had a chance to start um, working with Combine, but uh, I wanted to go deeper. So basically, it was a kind of thing that I can learn, learn something by doing. That's why I decided, okay, I'm free to do whatever I want. It's my app, so why not? Why not? It can be a good opportunity to try something new. And yeah, they basically that was the first part that why I decided to go with Combine and um, how I'm using. Um, well, I have a networking layer, obviously. Even though it's pretty slim, I'm, I'm just doing just a few maybe requests. Um, anyhow, I decided to try um, to use it there. Um, and actually, system gives you pretty good um, starting point. Like for instance, your L session, they have a data task publisher. You can immediately take it and start using also published uh, publishers around notification center. They're quite also useful. Um, yeah, and basically, basically that's it. So networking and other things. Um, okay. Yeah, also um, interacting with um, user um, interface, like clicking buttons, dragging some sliders, whatever. Also, in my uh, case, this is not really a document-based app, but still uh, I can open some files, basically JSON files, and edit them, and it automatically saves, saves everything. And I have a, let's say, wrapper around that logic that basically handles all the file-related stuff. And there is a publisher for current file, let's say. And whenever I have current file, then my rest of my UI knows, okay, I have to update uh, the UI according to the content of that file. And if I just close the file, then everything immediately just vanished, you know. 
it also was pretty um, easy to implement with um, Combine and yeah, works cool. really well. Sounds good. Yeah. All right, well, let's, uh, let's actually talk about the app that you made. So the app's called Altum um, and maybe just give us a little spiel on what uh, what the app actually does and what it's, what it's for. Yeah, so um, I think I can start with like question. Do you know, for instance, uh, most probably you know, and um, our listeners also know, but there are not so many, uh, let's say, convenient ways how you can open, um, let's say, a deep link or some kind of universal link on a simulator. Um, basically, the, the first obvious um, way is go to Safari app, put your URL there, click done. But, you know, it's not really convenient if you have, let's say, 10 or 100 deep links or universal links. Yeah, you basically won't be able to do that. Um, yeah, that was one reason. And um, I was thinking, okay, how can I improve that? And um, I think in Xcode 11, they've introduced, um, actually, SimCTL tool was that back then already, but they introduced some additional um, commands you can basically utilize. And one of them was basically open URL. And I've decided, okay, that's also kind of interesting. I can use XCRun SimCTL to open something, but again, I still have to do it manually. I have to put all my links to, to terminal and doing that. And then I realized, okay, what if I try to wrap that uh, tool around some nice UI? And that's how the idea came. Yeah, basically the application I developed helps um, developers um, work with uh, deep links and URL. Um, universal links it basically opens every kind any kind of link in the simulator cool yeah. all right well uh that sounds good and i kind of want to start diving into some of the code that uh you worked on i you worked on some uh this is a menu bar application so you did some interesting stuff around that and uh there's a lot of considerations that most people don't make when they uh, try menu bar apps and you kind of dove all in on uh, how, to <laughs> how to fully customize that. So uh, we'll talk a bit about that in uh, the next bit. Yeah. All right, so uh, you're gonna demonstrate how Altum works now with uh, using the simulators. Yeah, so basically the app um, itself, as I already mentioned, um, helps you to deal with uh, deep links and universal links. And here I'm gonna show you how, for instance, you can easily uh, open some kind of universal link in iPhone 11 Pro. So it's already booted. In my case, I'm gonna use um, some universal links for standard Mac OS, uh, sorry, Maps app. And in this case, we are going to show some Mexican restaurants. So if you just double click, you will immediately see the, the result. At the same time, if you would click, for instance, here, if you select Apple Watch simulator, and do the same. Um, it will open the, the the restaurants in Apple Watch. So yeah, at the same time, the app supports something I believe might be quite useful for for developers. It supports app association file. So for instance, if you have I don't know dozens dozens of universal links, let's say good example might be Netflix. They have pretty a lot. Um, HTTPS netflix.com so as you can see they have different environments i believe and for each environment they have different universal links and it's quite a lot and mm -hmm. yeah if you imagine doing this kind of stuff using xiran simctl i think it's gonna be a nightmare right at the same time you can also generate a qr code and scan it with your real physical device and this a link will be opened, I believe, in your app if you have it installed on your system. Cool. Yeah, and as you can see, um, the app is using um, cast custom NS window. And yeah, th there is actually a standard one, which is NS popover, but I believe that it's not really customizable, or at least um, it doesn't fit to, to my needs. So in my case, I wanted to have different corner radius. I also wanted um, to have my own color here in this triangle. So for instance, if you're using standard and this popover, and then you play some content inside, which has, for instance, red color, I believe no one will do that. But if, if so, then this triangle is still gonna be, I don't know, gray. Yeah, depends on your appearance. So sure. yeah, 
and this to be honest doesn't look good so to fix that i i, I saw a couple of actually workarounds but all of them to me personally they were kind of hacky and so i wouldn't put that to my app yeah so sure. i decided okay what options do we have and yeah that's that's how i came up with my own implementation for that Cool. At the same time, um, basically, this um, menu is also using the same technique, which I'm going to highlight just in a moment. All right, so let's dive into what you've done to make that custom in this window. So yeah, I've started with um, custom, I call it popover, this library or yeah, small small thingy. It's, it's open source, you can um, play with it. It's on my GitHub. I will will post link um, afterwards and yeah you can play with it you can try different um, settings the cool thing about this popover is actually um, it has quite a few as you can see quite a few configurations so you can play with background color you can play with border color and so on so it's pretty customizable i would say nice. and yeah basically how can you use it? Yeah, you can um, create the popover itself with um, default configuration, or you can use, for instance, in my case here, you can see that I already subclass this default configuration with my own, where I changed some properties. So yeah, up to you, either to use default one or just uh, your custom one. Then the next step would be um, to basically set it up. In this case, you can you have two options. Either you use custom view, like in this case, it's just uh, NS view with red color, or you can use you can use any NS image you like. As you can see, it has here it has either NS view or just just an NS image, and then you have to pass the content. Now, if we take a look on what do I have here, the structure is pretty let's say straightforward i didn't expect that it's going to be like that but in the end it's not that complicated so for instance here we have a popover window background view which let's say um, is a heart of, of the component because it's basically responsible for drawing all of that it's responsible for uh, for the shape it's responsible for the position so for instance if you move this guy here you see that the position of this arrow also changed and yeah, if you move all the way to the right, like that, it still looks good. So, and cool. the, the the view or the window doesn't overlap with the edge of your screen. So this is the heart of 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 this component. It's basically drawing everything. And then another important thing is the window itself. So in my case, I have a custom popover window where I'm doing some black magic with content view. So content view is uh, the the view which takes uh, whatever you put it or put inside. But in my case, I wanted to kind of exchange the content view with my own implementation of that content view. And therefore, I have a custom setter for for it. And yeah, basically, getter is standard. This uh, code is basically taking whatever you pass inside and ex kind of exchange with the standard content view and place it on top. Yeah. Nice. Very cool. So yeah, the basically the, you got the background view that is doing all the drawing work essentially on the window. The window is pretty much just responsible for <laughs> behaving like a window behaves. And, exactly. Uh, you're just doing some nice workarounds for uh, the content view. So presumably you can set um, you know, the, the the actual content that you want on top of it rather than having to deal with the difference between the background view and the actual content view that is uh, being presented. Yeah. So Correct. very nice. Cool. Also, there are a couple of um, small things you need to bear in mind. So for instance, I didn't come up with some cool custom animation for appearance. You see it's just standard, which is actually used by, I think, an SPOPOR, maybe I'm wrong, but this can be achieved really easily uh, by using this property. Mm -hmm. So animation behavior is set to utility window. It basically gives you this nice, let's say, fade animation. Without that, it just appears immediately like, bam. Gotcha. Um, and another quite um, 
useful thing is this one, level. It needs to be status bar to be on top of everything. Right. Because for instance, in my case, I wanted to app, this app needs to be always on top of all my windows. As you can see, it's even if I click somewhere outside, it's still um, like on top of everything. This can be easily customized by settings. But the idea was that, for instance, you're working with your simulator, whatever, and you should be able to immediately change the, the content of the simulator by clicking different deep links. And yeah, you don't want to go here, click and again, you link and so on. So I wanted to keep it always on top. The key for that was basically this status bar level. Right. Also, nice. you have, yeah, sorry. Oh, I was just saying very nice. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, also, if you have multiple screens, and I believe that most developers do have multiple screens, you can, um, there is a expose uh, behavior that whenever you um, do this gesture and you have another screen and you switch to another screen, the, the popover needs to basically jump to another screen. And this can be also be um, achieved by using this can join all spaces. Also pretty pretty interesting because first time when I implemented without all of that, yeah, it was basically completely unneutral. So I feel that it's something not, not from macOS because it doesn't behave like normal macOS apps. And then I started like looking, okay, what uh, NS window um, has? And I, I realized that it actually has a lot of things that you need to keep in mind in order to make your app feel um, native. Otherwise, right. yeah, it, it won't feel native. Yeah, this seems to be a discussion that keeps coming up about <laughs> what what Mac apps truly are. And uh, I mean, I, I don't really care to debate what what the framework necessarily is that's being used, but there there are just sort of expectations, I guess, that um, I don't know, it's just kind of a usability thing, right? Where as you're using a particular application, you you want it to behave in a particular way that is useful to you, right? Whether it's arrow keys behaving as you expect them to behave or uh, sort of the, the keep up behavior, right? Where um, there's there's just a lot of ways that you can customize things to get sort of that correct functionality that would make the app most useful. And uh, it's just focusing on those little things is, is definitely uh, what, what can set you apart, I guess. <laughs> yeah, totally. And there is a really nice example from iOS world. Um, on iOS, we have um, something called PhoneGap. It's basically cross-platform, let's say, framework, um, which kind of um, gives you a possibility to make an app which looks kind of as iOS app, but it doesn't feel like iOS app. And in the end, um, I faced many times with kind of issues that um, there is an app written in PhoneGap, um, and then the customer asks basically, okay, can you make a native app? Because, yeah, it doesn't it doesn't feel natural. And right. even though it's kind of fast, you can do the app pretty fast, but then in the end, you don't get what you expect from the app. Right. Yeah, no, it's definitely, uh, I mean, that's there's definitely a difference between native approaches and not and especially when new releases come out and stuff like that you're always you're always a little bit behind even even if it was identical in every other way you're just kind of always waiting for that behavior and uh, I know I know su things suffer like with dark mode and stuff like that where um, you know there's just a lot of automatic things that you kind of get in software updates with native uh, frameworks and some of that doesn't really carry over, but anyway, that's uh, it looks it looks uh, like this is a nice uh, way that you can customize sort of uh, your your menu bar application windows in in that case, and uh, it's definitely something that uh, I I know the number of times I see a NS popover coming from uh, from menu bars it, it kind of drives me nuts because the behavior is always pretty much not what I want, <laughs> mm -hmm. and. Yeah. Uh, whether it's whether it's with expose not behaving correctly, uh, the window doesn't go away, or it's uh, when you click away from um, the, the the menu bar, the application the, the window doesn't disappear. And I know in in this case you explicitly wanted your window to exactly. stay up, but uh, but right, and, but you have the ability to kind of uh, customize that easily, I guess. And uh, yeah. I, I, with it's just a lot, a lot of things when you're trying to jam and just pop over into this approach. Uh, so anyway, the whole point of me uh, wanting to bring you on for this was that uh, I think a lot of people can gain a lot from looking at your popover example code that, uh, again, we'll post the link for that open source in uh, the description and uh, take a look at that to see how you can 
really get some great custom NS window behavior that perhaps you want to achieve in your own apps. So, Yeah, another, I think, interesting topic might be the menu I mentioned before. So it's basically using the same technique. It's custom NS window, custom NS view, and all together it gives you this nice um, menu. It's also open source, so feel free to check it and yeah, use it if you want, or just take some, some parts of it and implement it in your way. So if, if this guy, I mean, Popover has, I don't know, maybe 10 um, options to, to play with, the menu has, I think, around 30. So <laughs> feel free. It's like a you know, playground. You can do whatever you want and nice. see how it works. Great. All right. Well, thanks so much for coming on and uh, sharing, sharing your uh, good Popover stuff. Yeah, thanks for having me in your video. <laughs> no problem. See you next time. See you, bye. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to the channel, give this video a like, and share it with your friends. Ways to contribute and additional information are in the description. I'll see you next week.